This class is dedicated to Rachelea, Basra Chaim Tzvi. We're continuing um, our class on Malat Torah, of understanding what Torah is all about. So the Sefer, as we said last time, is written by um, the brother of the Gon of, of Vilna, and the explanations that we're reading, which are called Torah Or, is written by Rav Yitzchak Isaac Chaver. Okay, so we're beginning on, if any of you ever want to buy the book, okay, which I have to admit, to stay straight with you, does meander a bit. So it's very hard to know where, it's, where we're going to be led. But um, it's interesting, and it's deep. And maybe we'll figure out its inner structure as we go. So... Until now, he spoke about the essence of Torah. Now he's going to, as he says, explain the details of the mitzvah of learning Torah. So not what it is in essence, but how and in what way it's a mitzvah. So let's begin by reading the actual words of the Vilna Gon's brother, and then we'll read about it. And now we'll explain all of the details of the mitzvah of learning Torah. Ketiv uvechata b'chayim. So the first detail that we have to know is that we're instructed to choose life. It's instruction from God. He wants us to choose life. The difference between something that's alive and something that's dead, as we all know, is that something that's alive is growing and changing. Okay, it says about the Torah, Ki hi chayecha. Torah is your life, meaning it's the means through which growth and change can take place. So you could argue, um, as people do, that there are people who don't learn Torah who grow and change. So um, I want to share with you something interesting that happened. The Rav of the, um, of the breast of Kehillah here in Harnoff, it's not really a Kehillah, the Shul is a more uh, a correct statement, had a very interesting thing happen to him. He's a very sort of charismatic type. He's a chazan. He's, uh, his melodies are very evocative. So people come to him. And a um, young man came, an Israeli, he just finished his army service, and he traveled to the east, which is a part of the culture. So here he was in northern India, in one of the Israeli ashrams. There are so many Israelis in India that it's a beyond belief tragedy. There are little villages where there are ashrams that have Hebrew street signs, and even on some of the stores, the storekeeper thinks that they're just a Hebrew translation of what the store sells. It'll, sell, it'll say things like, Hu ganav al so he just came back from one of these um, ashrams and he sought out a Hasidic rabbi. So he was saying, why did you come to me? What is it that I could help you with? <coughs> so he said, I know about Judaism. I didn't come to discuss Judaism. Now what did he know about Judaism? He knew what the secular media sells him about Judaism. That observant people are narrow-minded racists, are violent, um, are primitive. So he knows Judaism. And, uh, you know, and it's very nice to eat gefilte fish, but that's not really what life's all about. But when he was in India, one of the gurus gave him a book. And in the book, in its introduction, there was a Baal Shem Tov story. So here's the story. The story, as was rendered by this guru, was that once there was a child who was orphaned. His name was Yisrael. He was orphaned at the age of five. And his father, who was very old when he was born, okay, um, died and told him in his, last, in his last strength, in the last words that came forth from him, don't be afraid of anything but God. Now the city that the child was living in, which was not really a city but a village, was so extraordinarily small and poor that nobody offered to take this five-year-old orphan in. So he would go to the cheder, to the school, and he would eat there, and then he would come home to the empty house. And he would wander a lot. So the forest became his abode. I don't know if any of you have been to Eastern Europe, but you could travel hours, three hours, four hours, and see nothing but birch trees. So the forest was his abode. And one day he was by himself in the forest, and um, he saw a man. Now the man was the guardsman of 
the home of the local noble, the poets of the place, and he was surprised to see a child, and the child was surprised to see another person here in the forest. So he says to um, the child, who are you? He says, I'm Yisrael, who are you? And he says, I'm the Shomer, I'm the guardsman. What are you? And he says, I'm also the guardsman. I'm guarding what Hashem made. So he said, this story made him realize that on a certain level, we're talking about the Israeli boy, not the people in the story at this point, that the mission of guarding oneself and guarding the world is what he sees as his own mission. So he wanted to um, seek out a Hasidic rabbi because he was given 